OK, today we are going to continue talking about uh, roundabouts and the geometric design safety assessment. OK, uh, last lecture we we touched on that and uh, but we, before we start, we discussed the geometric design elements of the roundabout. Then we moved on and uh, uh, you know the elements from roundabouts, channelized approaches, yield control on all entries. OK. Uh, counterclockwise. These are the main characteristics or the main uh, features that distinguishing uh, roundabouts. And here we showed that okay, these are the, these features. Then we move to the main or the design features. The design features for roundabouts uh, are shown here, and we are going to reiterate on these again, just to make sure that. We are on the same page. As I mentioned before, uh, we have here a circulatory roadway. So this is for the circulation of traffic. Uh, there need to be an entry line or the yield line. Okay, that's the entrance line. This define, defines the point where vehicles should wait and stop until they find acceptable gap to enter the roundabout. Uh, one of the other features, the inscribed diameter. The diameter is measured this way, okay? Then there should be a, a isolate a splitter island, as I mentioned before, okay? And uh, there is an, a, 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 you know, a, a central island raised, and there is an apron. OK, and there is a land buffering, landscape buffer. As I mentioned, the landscape buffer function is basically to prevent pedestrians from walking into the uh, uh, roundabout or the or the circulatory uh, uh, roadway. OK, however, uh, pedestrians can cross from these pedestrians crossing. OK. We have the truck apron, we have the exit, OK. Uh, that's pretty much, mo mo you know, most of, of the elements of the roundabout. Then we talked here about the split, the function of this. We have the, the central uh, island, OK. It, this is the island around which traffic circulates, OK. A splitter island, and I mentioned that the splitter island is basic to separate entering from exiting traffic. Okay, and also to deflect and slow entering uh, traffic. And we showed last time the video for the flying car that went through the the the, the roundabout. Okay, and there was no. Uh, you know, the splitter island was not deflecting or slowing the traffic. Okay. Then uh, there's the circulatory way and the apron, all of these elements, it has a function. Uh, as I mentioned, the, the, the circulatory way, that's for the vehicles to, to drive through, okay, to travel through. The apron is basically to accommodate uh, the wheel tracking for large vehicles, for trucks and fire trucks and so on. Uh, the yield line, as I mentioned, to mark the point of entry for the approaching vehicles. Uh, the access, you know, the other, the accessibility to pedestrians crossing, okay, the bicycle treatment, landscape buffer. And we come here to the main or the key design dimensions. Okay, the, the, the key design, the design dimensions are basically the following. Basically, the entry radius. The entry radius is critical in what it defines the speed of the vehicle entering. So this radius is critical because it dictates, you know, how fast the, the round, the geometry of the round uh, about, uh, you know, allows entering vehicle to enter at what speed. Okay. This is very critical and this is one of the key issues 
which is the entry radius for the vehicle trajectories. Uh, of course, the, the circulatory road width, okay, it's determined by the number of lanes entering and also with the radius or the diameter of the roundabout. The roundabout diameter is measured from here to there, okay? Uh, any questions so far? So the inscribed circular diameter. The, the, uh, the doctor, doctor, yes, yes. هل يعني عدد اللين داخل هذا عدد اللين داخل الراوند اباوت هل هو هذا اللي يفرق معي هذا القصد؟ اوكي فيرست اوف اول ذا سيركلاتري رود ويث اوكي ات ديبندس اون تو ايشوز ديبندس اون ذا نمبر اوف لينز هير انترينج اند ات ديبندس اون ذا راديوس هير اور ذا ديامتر اوف ذا راوند اباوت اوكي اند ذا ديزاين فيكل all of this together determines this uh, circulatory road width. Okay? But the other... The good, question good. Before, there are two factors. Yes, two factors. The, the question that uh, your, your, your colleague was asking before was the entry radius. Okay? As, an, uh, you know, as I mentioned before, the entry radius uh -huh, dictates uh -huh. the speed of entry. So the speed of entry is dictated by the entry radius. If you have, you know, for example, if you have a, a straight, you know, straight line, you can enter the, the roundabout straight forward like this. You don't have to, to slow down, right? But if you have a radius that you enter with, yes, okay, then you must slow down, okay? And actually, that's one purpose of the, uh, splitter island that's one of the purposes for the splitter island to slow you down De you know you know force the drivers to deflect their vehicle trajectory okay and you know having them slowing down so the inscribed circular diameter okay this depends on the size of the roundabout and you know it defines the size and depends on the volume there are you know several factors play a role in this uh, the circulatory roadway width, okay, as I mentioned before, defines the roadway width for vehicles circulating, uh, 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 for vehicle circulation around the approach width and the departure width. This is dependent on the, you know, the, the initial design of the, the roads here. Here, that's a very interesting table from the Federal Highway Administration, okay. Uh, these are guidelines. So it says that the desirable maximum entry design speed, okay, is from 15 to 20 or 25 to 30. This is for mini roundabout. The mini roundabout, okay, it has a maximum of single lane entry, okay. Typical inscribed circular diameter, okay, is from 30, 13 to 27 if it's a mini roundabout. For single lane roundabout, the entry speed from 30 to 40. For multi lane roundabout, from 40 to 50. Okay. And the mini roundabout is one, uh, 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 one lane entering, and the single lane roundabout is one. For the multi lane, it's two plus, two or more. Okay. Usually three, that's the most, that's the, the highest it can get to. Okay. Okay, for the inscribed circular diameter, it's 13 to 27 from, for the single lane roundabout from 27 to 55, from the, for the multi-lane roundabout from 46 to 91. Let's have a look just to inspect some of our roundabouts in the area and see what we have here. Okay, this is not here. This is in North Carolina. Okay, city of Raleigh. Okay, uh, that was an intersection. And as you can see, there was another intersection here. It was a two lane. Okay, here is two lane, but as you can see, there is 
uh, uh, three, uh, here it becomes three lanes. That's for left turn pocket. Here it's two lane and there is a left turn pocket. It was a big mess at that intersection. Two successive intersections, actually three successive intersections. That's another intersection. Okay, one intersection, one intersection. These have been replaced. That was this image from 2005. As you can see, there are queues waiting and, uh, you know, it was replaced by a roundabout. That's how it looks now. So now it's single lane roundabout. Okay, and there is no queues, minimum queues. Let's review what we have here. Let's look at the inscribed diameter for this roundabout. Okay, let's just measure from here the, the inscribed diameter. Is it within the same range? How many meters we have? We have 37.6, okay? So what do we have in our table here? The recommended values from 27 to 55. So we are just in the middle almost. Okay. We have here entry. Hmm? Entry lines. You can see that. We have pedestrian crossing. Okay, here and here. Okay, and here they shifted the traffic. So this uh, intersection was closed and the traffic diverted here. So they created another roundabout here and they canceled this traffic signal. Okay, so most of, uh, let's look at the diameter of this one. The diameter here is from this way to this way. 30 meters, okay? Please, for, you know, what do we have here? We have raised island. That's a raised island. Then the rest of the island, this is an apron. It's not made from asphalt. It's made from a different material, but it's accessible. It's made from different material, but it's accessible for trucks that they can traverse. So, for example, if there is a fire truck, it can go through this roundabout easily with no problem. Let's have a look, closer look. You see? That's the apron, okay? It's just slightly above the pavement surface, okay? And that's the island here. Clear, Shabab? Let's have another emergency. That's for emergency vehicles, for trucks, okay? They can go over this uh, 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 this uh, this apron, okay? It's not highly, you know, for example, you know, if you look closely, it's just maybe one inch above the pavement, okay? So a truck can traverse it easily, okay? But for you as, you know, for example, it's lower than this side. This, this, this one, you see the other uh, splitter island here? Here, this is higher than uh, this one, okay? Clear? Okay. Clear. Good. Uh, let's look again at another roundabout, but that's in different place. That's basically here in. Okay, that's another roundabout. This roundabout actually, the geometry of this roundabout is good. However, there are some issues with it. Okay, the overall, the here we have splitter islands. Okay, 
Uh, but what what's missing here? Let's check the diameter. How much the diameter? 140 meters. What was the limit? Over than the 750. Here, the limit for more than uh, between 12, 20, between 57. 46 and 90. So this way, it's much bigger than it's oversized. Okay, but that's okay. We can live with that. Let's look at the rest of the elements. We have here buffer. Okay. Uh, we don't have Bidisian crossing. You notice this? So that's one issue. And there is one another critical issue. We don't have entry lines. Correct? That's very critical. Yes. However, we have here three entering lanes. We have here three lanes. The circulation is basically three lanes. And that's perfect. Good. The existing three lanes, there's consistency. Let's go at the other roundabout. Okay. Look at this. How many lanes we have? Here we have one, two, three, four. Okay. We have four. one, two, three, four. However, if you notice with me, you see this area? This area nobody is using, practically speaking. Okay. Another issue, the entry, the splitter island. Okay. The entry is almost straight into the roundabout. And we'll come to this later. And, you know, and again, we don't have uh, entry lines defining the entry of the roundabout. So that's another uh, you know, another issue. And if we look at the diameter, again, this one is 115. However, the diameter here is less, but the the entry speed, as we will show you now, is is uh, is terrible here. Okay. Okay, let's go back to, okay, Central Island fully uh, tra uh, tra uh, traversable and raised island maybe, raised, maybe have traversable abron. That's what we shown in, uh, in the roundabout in North Carolina. In, in, you know, here raised and may have traversable. In this case, we don't, you know, if, there, if the, the inscribed diameter is large, this is enough for uh, for trucks to 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 go through easily with no problem. Okay. Uh, the volume, the recommended volume for a, for many roundabouts. Okay, uh, it's up to fifteen thousand vehicle per day. For uh, single lane roundabouts, it's up to twenty five thousand. For two lane roundabouts, for two lane roundabouts, up to forty five thousand vehicles per day. Now, let's look at the design object. Basically, the first objective, okay, the first objective, provide slow entry speed and consistent speeds through the roundabout by using deflection. Okay, that's one of the key issues. Let me show you something here. What can you see here? Can you see this pavement marking? Hey, Shabab. Can you see this pavement marking? Yes. Hmm? Why? This pavement marking with the splitter island here is basically to force drivers to slow down, make a curve, okay? Then slowing down to go 
here. So when they enter here, they enter with a curvature. There is a curve that they are entering with. Let me just, you know, grab this image, edit, copy image, and let put it in. Okay. Uh, we, will, we will discuss this later in more details. But now let's go back to So, as I mentioned, the first objective is to provide slow entry speed. Provide appropriate number of lanes and lane assignment to achieve adequate capacity lane volume. Okay, that means in the roundabout, the number of lanes should be matching and should be consistent to, to you know, to the entry, uh, uh, entering approaches. Uh, provide smooth, uh, smooth channelization. Okay, that, uh, uh, that, uh, that is intuitive to drivers and results in vehicle naturally using uh, the intended lanes. This is very critical. Okay, provide adequate accommodation for design vehicles. That's for trucks and so on. Designed to, uh, designed to meet the needs for pedestrians and cyclists. There should be, you know, pedestrians crossing and stuff like that. Provide appropriate side distance and visibility for drivers, for driver uh, recognition of uh, the intersection and conflicting. Yeah, and the side distance is sufficient for a roundabout. Tab ta'ala, shuf kida, step by step. Design elements, safety check. Okay, based on the design objectives, okay, that's how we are conducting our design element safety checks. First of all, speed check. Okay, a well designed roundabout reduces vehicle speeds upon entry and achieves consistency. Careful attention to the design speed of the roundabout of a roundabout is fundamental in attaining good safety performance. In order to have a safe roundabout, okay, we need to be very careful for the design speed for this roundabout. And how we are the geometric elements in the roundabout are, are selected. Let's look at this figure. First of all, the first, this is the fastest speed, the fastest vehicle path through a single lane roundabout. First of all, we try to determine the vehicle trajectory for a fast vehicle, which is de defined by this line. This line is offset from the abron by 1.5 meter, and from this island by 1.5 meter, and from this edge by 5.5 meter, 1.5 meter. Okay. Then based on this fastest vehicle. We determine the curve, the radiuses for this entry, okay? And based on that radius, we determine the entry speed. I think we have studied before. Uh, let me just, uh, you remember this equation, V square over G R equal E plus F. You studied this equation with Dr. Uh, in the highway geometric design, design of horizontal curves. Okay. We have the lateral friction. Okay. That's uh, side friction. So based on this, we can get that V equal square root of G R uh, F. L. So if R increase, the speed will what? Will increase. The smaller the R, the lower the speed. Clear?
So this is how to construct the, the, the fastest vehicle path. This is for, uh, this was for a single lane. This is for two lane. So it takes from, it takes here 1.5, me, uh, one meter, and from here 1.5, and from here 1.5, and from here 1.5, and back to one meter. Then you connect uh, these points with uh, with a, 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 a curved line, okay, and you, you, you measure the radiuses. That's another trajectory for the way. Okay, these are for the trajectories for through uh, traffic. This is for the vehicles that are making a right turn. Okay, so the same one meter, one meter, and here 1.5 meter. So basically, these are the three cases that we need to check. So we need to, um, to measure R1, that's for the true, okay? And R3, that's for the exiting uh, uh, radius. Uh, R5, that's for the right turn. This is for the through traffic. This is for the vehicles that are making, you know, right, uh, left turn, okay? So we have to measure the R4. Clear? And of course, this, this also has radius of entry. Similar to R1. But might be different because it's in a different location. Let's have a look at the, the images that we saved on... Uh, okay. Let's just... Eliminate this. These are elements that, you know, uh, images that I saved from uh, uh, from uh, Google Earth and I scaled it on AutoCAD so we can conduct our measurements. So here, let's take one meter from the curve. So here one. These are to scale, by the way. Okay, let me just draw uh, a line and here we draw another line tangent And here, let's select this one here. Okay. Then let's make the offsets. The offset, the first offset is one meter. So we take this one here, one meter here. The second offset from the curve, it was how much? 1.5. Okay, let's now draw uh, a polyline. Okay, 
Let's just have a look at the entry curve. Look at uh, annotate and let's measure the curvature. Here, what is the curvature? 76 meters. Okay. So, what is the curve here? 588. So, that's almost a straight line. Then, what is the curve here? Sixty-three, okay, point six five. Let's see now what are the speeds corresponding to these uh, radiuses. If you look here, okay, uh, how much was the the speed that we got before? Uh, the radius. I'm sorry. The radius we have 76, 76 divided by 0 0.3, 76 divided by 0 0.3, it's 250 almost feet. So 250 feet, that's some, somewhere here. So it was the entry speed, okay? If there is a super elevation, then it's going to be, uh, uh, you know, it's between 25, 27, almost the average is 27.5 mile per hour. Okay, so this roundabout, I can say it's perfect. The design for this roundabout is great regarding the safety of the entry speed. And that's actually one of the key parameters that we, 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 we look for. Okay, the same we can do here. But we need to adjust to scale this uh, this uh, this image. Any questions so far? Let's just bring another case. Okay. And see. So I think all of you know this this uh, this roundabout. This is the roundabout just before extra on King Faisal Road. That's the one. Okay. Okay. Let's now move to just the roundabout right after that roundabout. Okay, let's take this image, copy image, and let's put it in AutoCAD. Okay, we need first, in order to be able to, to take measurements, we need to scale that image. So here we have a scale saying this is 93 meters. We're going to put the cursor here and try to see how far this two points. So here, this distance, it's 691. This distance, let's just measure it on annotate. Let's just measure a distance here from here to here. It's 691.8, almost 600, uh, 692. And it's supposed to be 93. So that means we need to scale it down. So how to scale it down? We are going to divide 93 divided by this value, 692. Okay, so we are going to 
factorize it or scale it to point 13. So we go here and we go to scale and select this one and put it here and say it's point one three four three nine. So now it's back to now we can compare it even with this other roundabout. It's on the same scale now. So let's now evaluate and see the speed of entry. Let's draw a polyline. Okay. That's someone coming from that edge. Arc. That's someone just going through Let's see, what is the speed of entry here? Mm. What is the radius of entry? 406, 406. How much speed this allows? 406 divided by Point three, so that means almost thirteen hundred and fifty feet. Let's go back to this curve. Okay, so this is forty four hundred. It's supposed to be somewhere here, so it's gonna be way up here, maybe forty miles per hour. Forty miles per hour is how much, Yeshabab? Multiply by 1.6. Arbosity. Arbosity. Let me just calculate it for you. The diameter that we were we got here it was 406. If we say that v equal square root of 9.81 multiply 406 multiply Point one two. How much is this? This is twenty one. Point eight six meter per second. That means it's multiplied by three point six. So this is seventy eight point seven kilometers per hour. What does this mean? It means that this geometry allows drivers okay to go through this intersection enter at you know 78 or 80 kilometers per hour okay okay what is the recommended speed of entry for this kind of roundabouts from 40 to 50 so we are at 80 and actually if we tweak the geometry of the end of this vehicle trajectory, we might be able to get even a worse case. You know, if we move this here a little bit, it's now 600. Okay. So now it's 600. Just with a, with a slight tweak, okay. So 
this geometry is hazardous. To show you another example, I think most of you know this roundabout. It's here, El Azizi roundabout. I think most of you know it. Correct? What is the speed of entry from here to there? Without calculation, the radius is, 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 you know, is large. How many lanes do we have here even? Look at carefully, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, how many lanes? Six lanes. Yes, how many lanes entering? One, two, three, four. Okay. Three, three, four. Four or, uh, you know, in most cases it's four or three. Okay, so these extra lanes creates, you know, problems and issues. The diam this, this radius allows for a very high speed of entry. Which is, this is, this is, you know, a risky, actually this, this roundabout is a black spot. Let's look at the original design of this roundabout. That was the original design. Okay. It was how many lanes? One, two, three. One, two, three. It was perfect. But what was the problem? The capacity of the roundabout during morning peak hour, okay, uh, needed, you know, the population living in this area, okay, they want to go to the MAM. So they had to go and circulate the roundabout, intersecting with traffic generated from Aziziyah. So they came up with this modification to solve the problem. So they created the U-turns. Their objective was primarily to create these U-turns. So to reduce the, vehicle, the number of vehicles circulating the roundabout. Okay, that's good. But at the same time, they created that big mess in this geometry. So try to avoid that. Any questions? Okay. Any questions? Okay. Let's go back. So as I mentioned, safety and basically the speed of entry, that's the core for the safety of roundabouts. The other issue, the pathway alignment. What is the pathway alignment? The pathway alignment basically means that when you are entering from one lane, you find yourself, you know, aligned to the same lane in the roundabout. So to give you a better understanding for it, the entry design, for example, here, you are entering, okay, so this vehicle can go this way. It's not aligned, and this vehicle can go this way. So here we have a problem. So the, the pathway of the vehicles must avoid the generation of these conflicts. How can we achieve that? It's very simple. It's in the design, you need to maintain after, that's the small radius for entry. Then once you enter here, you give, you give the vehicles a small segment, straight lines. Okay? This way, you guarantee that vehicles are, you know, adjusted and aligned to enter right to the, uh, you know, their designated lane. To give you a better understanding, let's look at these. You remember, here, that this, the, there was a, 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 you know, a small radius, that's the radius of entry, okay? Then, here there is some sort of a straight line, large radius. So that's a perfect design. If you look at this one, 
you don't have this. You enter, you don't know which lane you are supposed to be in. But here you are aligned straight forward to that lane. Okay? So that's another uh, key. And I mentioned, in order to do that, you have to make your curvature here, then give a, a, sh a short segment for the th vehicle trajectory to go into the circulatory on, you know, lane. And that's exactly the details of how to do that. You have, that's a lane width, lane width, okay. Uh, then these are the small segments straight lines tangent to the vehicle uh, at, you know to the vehicle to the lane and actually you do here curve widening the lane width inside the 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 circulatory width okay should be you know adjusted accordingly <coughs> any questions Okay, the best way, uh, uh, you know, alignment, okay, uh, there's, you know, it's preferred to have a separation between entry and exit. So here, we have a path merge and uh, uh, these are conflicting points of conflict that we need to avoid. In order to avoid that, here, there is a, you know, two conflict points. We need to avoid that. How to avoid that is just to move this to be here. Okay, like this. So instead, you know, here, we it was removed from here to be like this, diverted, okay, to minimize the overlap between the two paths. So the, the traffic coming from here conflict only in one point. And the traffic coming from here conflicts also with what point here. You know? So it's not, there is no repetition for conflict points. Clear? This is one of the issues for the pathway alignment. The second issue, or the third issue, that's the accommodation of design vehicle. So we need to check that the vehicle, the, the geometry allows the design vehicle to go through easily, okay? In, uh, in our case here, for example, for these cases, I don't think there's, there would be a problem because the diameter, okay, in, in, in this geometry is very large. So there is, there is no issue. However, for here, no, the geometry is very tight. The, the diameter is very small. That's why there's, you know, apron to accommodate uh, uh, turning trucks and stuff like that. And maybe buses also. <coughs> Any questions? So we have to check for the vehicle. How can we do that? We can do that using uh, auto turn that's an add-on for uh, for uh, AutoCAD. Uh, we have to overlay the wheel tracks for the design vehicles to make sure that the geometry allows. And as I mentioned, for both of these roundabouts, it's not critical because the radius is too large, okay? However, for small roundabouts, it becomes essential, okay? Because the turning characteristic for trucks here Okay, will dictate the size of or the, the area of the apron, how much, and so on. So basically, here's an image that shows large truck making a turn around, you know, and the wheels are going through over the apron. You can see the apron here is not significantly higher than the pavement surface itself. Clear, ya shabab? Okay, so here, as I mentioned, uh, for the roundabout design, the size. The inscribed circle diameter is determined by a number of design objectives, including accommodation for design vehicles 
and providing speed control. If you have large diameter, that means you are allowing vehicles to drive at a faster speed, okay? Here are the inscribed uh, uh, diameters or the inscribed circular diameter range, and that's for the design vehicle. If the design vehicle is SU, for example, 30, then the inscribed for mini roundabout, that's the, 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 the recommended inscribed diameter range. For a single lane roundabout, okay, and the design uh, uh, vehicle was P40, that's PAS40, uh, or WB50, WB67, these are going to be the ranges for the inscribed circular diameter and so on. Clear? For two lane, multi lane roundabout, these are the, for three lanes, that's the inscribed diameters. Any questions? Okay. Splitter Island. That's the, the you know, what's the, their purpose is what? To provide refuge for pedestrians crossing the street. So, uh, for pedestrian crossing from, from here to here, okay, they cross this part first, then they wait here for the up, you know, for the incoming traffic and, you know, go back here. So they stand here, wait for gap, okay, and they cross, they stand here, wait for gap, then they continue their cross. So here, the splitter islands, give refuge ملجأ okay يلجؤون إليه المشاة okay so pedestrians refuge to these islands so that's one uh, one of the one of the purposes the second is to assist in controlling speed these curves you know this curvature here the curvature of this splitter island a, a, a is critical for defining the the speed of entry guide for the traffic into the roundabout physically separate entering from exiting streams as you can see the end the exiting from one side and so there is a separation between both so you know there is no chance that you know a deter wrong way movements that's very important this configuration prevents vehicle from making this maneuver. It's extremely difficult for a vehicle to make that maneuver. Okay, a, a place for mounting signs, and also it's used used and useful that you can put a sign here, warning signs, stop sign, and so on. Clear. So these are the purposes of the splitter island. Clear? Pedestrian uh, design uh, treatment. As we mentioned before, the pedestrians, we have here a, a landscape barrier in this area. Okay. The function of this landscape barrier is to prevent someone from crossing into the, into the circulatory a, a roadway in the roundabout. Okay, if someone wants to cross the, the roundabout, they can cross from the pedestrian crossing. But this is no. Okay. Any questions? Bicycle design treatment. This is very important. In, 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 in some areas where you have bicyclists, okay, they have this bicycle lane. You see, this is a bicycle lane. So they are given the choice is to access the pedestrian walkway and, you know, be treated in this location as uh, uh, pedestrians, okay, or they can keep going with the traffic but you give them the choice to, you know, to go this way or, uh, 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 you know, the other way. 
and that's a detailed drawing for the uh, uh, for this axis point. Okay, as you can see, there is a slope here, and there is a detectable warning surface. This detectable warning surface is basically meant for both cyclists and uh, individuals that are visually impaired. Okay. So they can differentiate between this one and this one. Okay. It's usually a rough surface. Okay, that, you know, those visually impaired can, uh, 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 you know, detect that there is a, a change of texture. Any questions? What we see here is almost a perfect, you know, uh, roundabout. However, we can see, for example, the, uh, you know, landscape barrier in this area. Okay, so that's missing, but there's an entry line, uh, entry lines for all approaches. There is pedestrian crossing. Okay. There is apron. The geometry, you can see that from here to here, that's almost straight lines. These are almost straight line. The radius of entry, just by visual inspection, is seems to be okay from my perspective. Okay, so it's that's uh, you know, but it's missing only the uh, uh, you know landscape barrier. You can replace the landscape barrier by having you know some physical barrier that prevent people from walking into the roundabout. Okay. Any questions? That's another detailed drawing. Then we go to the other issue, which is basically the side distance and visibility. That's very critical, which means this area should be clear from signs that prevent drivers from seeing these distances. So the entry stream distance, that's D1, I should be able to see up to that point. Okay, circulating stream distance, I should be able to see the vehicles coming up to this point. Okay, at a distance of 15 feet from, because these are the decision-making distance, whether I'm going to stop, okay, or because here he's the, the driver is yielding and slowing down. At this point, he may, you know, at this point, he makes a decision whether he is going to be stopping and waiting for a gap or just continuing. So he needs to be able to see at these both distances. So in order for the driver, for he or she, to be able to see that far, we don't, we know, there must be no visual obstacles in these areas. Clear. However, I see in some intersections they put, you know, signs like this right in this island at that level, which is, you know, strange. Okay. Here it's a roundabout design, side distance, and visibility. Entering stream comprised of vehicle from and circulating stream. You should be able to see both. Uh, there is also regarding the side distance. Okay, so that's for the crosswalk. It should be clear and for the yield line. So these are the distance from the crosswalk for the pedestrian crossing should be clear. Okay, and for the yield line, this should be clear. Also within the roundabout itself, okay. Within the roundabout itself, 
the driver need to be able to see okay up to this point so he can this field of view should be clear that means if you want to put place some structures here it should be limited in this area and you maintain an offset clearance so the driver can see what's in there how we calculate this d distance this distance is based on the circulating speed okay any questions uh, also the the side distance sh this area should be clear why because if there's pedestrian crossing he needs to the driver needs to be able to make a decision whether to stop or you know continue that depends if there is pedestrians crossing or not these are detailed uh, drawings that are showing the the main uh, pavement marking for roundabouts please note that the roundabouts there is no lane switching This is very important. In roundabout, the, the basic rules of roundabout that you should not switch lanes within the roundabout. Okay. However, if we look at here, for example, this was just a single lane roundabout. But if we look at our roundabout and looking at the pavement marking, let me just open it in uh, on earth. What can we see here? What are the pavement marking? Hmm? What are these pavement markings saying? Can someone explain to me? Okay, what do we see here? This pavement marking allows drivers to change and switch lanes. So that's one issue. Another issue, we don't have lane channelization. That means here it says that all traffic, all traffic, for example, It says here that traffic driving through this one should either going forward, you know, through or making a right turn or maybe making a left turn. Here, just making a left turn only. So when this volume or when this traffic enter here, okay, the driver entering in this point, whoops. This means because of this channelization that the traffic coming from here should, you know, should enter here and should keep going and either exit from here or make a u-turn but the traffic coming from here can either turn this way go through or go left okay for example here this lane uh, right turn or through but he can not turn in this way the bottom line lane switching within the enters within the roundabout is not allowed by design okay any questions
Okay. So these are basically the pavement marking for roundabouts. This is for single lane. This is for two lane roundabout. And these are the signs, the signage recommended for each approach. You need to have a yield sign on both <laughs> sides. Okay. You have a sign for pedestrian crossing. You have a sign ahead of the roundabout saying that there is a roundabout. Okay. That's for the uh, single lane roundabout because you don't need to put channelization because all the traffic is just using one, one, uh, one lane. But in this case, okay, we have two, just focus with me here. Here we have two lanes and here we have one, two, three, three lanes in one direction because that's the way the channelization was designed for. And here, there is a sign explaining for the driver. If you want to go through or left turn or right turn, you may use this, uh, this lane. And here, you see these signs? Okay, it's explaining for the drivers which lane to use. Okay, so either they put it this way or they put it this way or put it this way or whatever way that is can convey the message. Yes. ليش هذه بس موجودة في إذا كانت three lanes ليش بتكون موجودة برضو في two lanes signs? This is one lane. If it's two lane, then it's going to be there. This is a two lane. Okay, but in the one lane, okay, you have one lane for all movements. So the one lane here will be. for all movements. You see my point? Yes, yes. Okay. And there is also here, this Avron. These are marks that telling, you know, through traffic that there is, you know, there is, you need to make a turn. Okay. Uh, as you can see, these are, uh, and also there is a channelization within the roundabout that is reflecting, uh, you know, uh, these are chevron, I'm sorry. Okay, and there is the yield sign and there is a sign for the pedestrian crossing. These are optional, okay. But these are a must, the, the yield sign is a must, the lane channelization is a must. Okay, any questions? Okay. Uh, I think this is going to be it for today. Uh, if you have any questions, you can go ahead and ask. Okay. I'm going to, uh, you know, assign uh, all the students in the class into small groups and I'm going to give you your first assignment okay and your assignment will be basically to review a roundabout and give me your remarks regarding this roundabout okay 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 